Hello and welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles and today's topic is epistaxis. Epistaxis, nose bleeding, is a pretty common presentation to emergency departments and most of the time it really doesn't cause that many difficulties for us. But sometimes it does. So we're going to look at all the bits and pieces about epistaxis. Now, first of all we probably should just go briefly back over the anatomy. Since we divide epistaxis into anterior bleeds and posterior bleeds, what's the difference? Well, let's have a look at the anatomy. At the front here we can see that there is an area here that is a network of an anastomotic network of vessels in this area called Dittles area and this network is called the Kaisenbach plexus and this is where most of your bleeding anteriorly comes from. It also can come from underneath the inferior turbinate. Now, posteriorly, most of the bleeds come from branches of the sphenopalatine artery right at the back. That's at the back of the nasal cavity near the nasopharynx. And these ones, of course, are the ones that tend to cause us more angst. So, what are the most likely causes of epistaxis? Well, overwhelmingly, it's, yeah. yeah. It doesn't look good, does it? But it's true. Picking your nose is number one cause. What are the other causes you can have? Well, you can have direct trauma. Uh, you could have prolonged dry air. Uh, you could have nasal infections. You have polyps. You can have tumours. So there's quite a, different, a, lot, a lot of different things that can cause it. What I haven't stressed so far is that overwhelmingly your bleeds are anteriorly and so they're easily accessible. The posterior bleeds are much more difficult and they're always more difficult if they're either on warfarin, plavix or one of those damn NOACs. Okay, so what do you do? Well, first of all, like all these bleeds, it's simple first day. It's compression, getting someone to squeeze over their nose, over the cartilaginous part and lean forward, not over the bony bit. There is some question about whether you get ice at the back of the, of the neck, but most people don't do that. So you still got a bit of bleeding. Most people now, what we do in the emergency department is put something like a pledget in there. There's a cotton wool soaked with 2% lignocaine and one in a thousand adrenaline and place it on the inside of the nose and get them to squeeze it over that area for about 10 minutes. That'll cause them vasoconstriction and some numbing in the area. Once you've done that, you can get them to blow out the clots and you can have a look yourself. Oh, at this stage I wouldn't mind mentioning that some people at this point, instead of using local anaesthetic with adrenaline as their pleasure, they actually go straight to using tranexamic acid and they either get a solution of tranexamination and just put it over the cotton wool or they get one of the 500 milligram tablets and they break that up and add water and then put a, a pledget or cotton wool in that and use that. It's meant to be very, very effective like it does for, for some of the, the um, dental, dental work we use in the emergency department. Okay, back to where we were. So you've got to be prepared because now you're going to have a look uh, to see where the bleeding area is. Prepared means give yourself, put a gown on, um, a splash proof gown, a visor and you'll need to get gloves and of course you need to get your equipment ready. And your equipment really is a good light. Um, I don't use the lights in the emergency department because they're often a bit scabby. So I would use my own headlamp, it's one of these like this. And you'll need to have a good sucker, an angled sucker, a 10 or 12 gauge angled sucker. Um, you need to get silver nitrate sticks ready and you'll need to get a nasal speculum because you want to be able to open up to have a look properly at the area. Get the, get the nose back like that, the head back so you can open up the nares and have a look at it like this. If you do see an area that's bleeding or a potential bleeding point, often on that inside, then you can get your silver nitrate stick and just just roll it over it for about five seconds. It'll start going a little bit gray as a silver nitrate uh, sort of chemically cauterizes the area. So that you don't touch the outside of the nose, balance your hand against the, their cheek, it's the patient's cheek, so you can get some stability. Okay. 
Well, what about you've done the pledged attempt and you've had a look and the blood's coming out and you really haven't got on top of it yet? Well, we used to do anterior layered, layered packs. That is, we'd use ribbon gauze, we'd put it with local anesthetic with some adrenaline, and then we'd pack anteriorly back through the nasal cavity, then we'd take that out, and then we'd put in feet of ribbon gauze layered into it to compress the area. Really, I haven't done that for a number of years. And the reason is that technology has meant we've had better things to do, better things to use. One of those better things to use, and probably the, the thing that's used most widely in Australian emergency departments, is the Rapid Rhino. Um, the, the Rapid Rhino, which most of you or many of you will know, is essentially it's a tampon. And the tampon itself is made of hydroxymethylcellulose, which is um, a hydrocolloid and it does pla causes platelet aggregation and becomes a lubricant when you add water to it, you put it immersed in water. On the inside of it is an area that you blow up, it's a balloon that you blow up with air and it swells inside the nasal cavity. And you can see the, the preparation and insertion um, on this video here. Okay, so that anterior um, pack or anterior tampon with, a, with something like a rapid rhino, and there are other balloon systems on the market, um, usually works pretty well. But what if you've got ongoing bleeding from there? Well, if you've got ongoing bleeding, you should look through the mouth, look through there and see if you've still got dripping down the back, which makes you suspect it's a posterior bleed. You have options still with tampons with posterior bleeds. You can use something like uh, the Rapid Rhino, the RR900, which is, has got a double balloon system. It's got a posterior balloon and an anterior balloon. So you put it right back, you blow up the posterior component, then pull it to get some traction, and then you blow up the anterior component. And you could do it on both sides. There are other, again, there are other double balloon systems on the market. With massive bleeds like this, if this doesn't hold it, then most of the time I've seen these with car accidents or massive facial trauma and they've actually gone to get the branch of the sphenopelatine artery embolized. And this works very well, but you need to have a well organized system. Often you need to be in a major trauma, um, major trauma center that has interventional radiology. So what do you do if you don't, if you don't have a major trauma system um, center or you need to transfer them to that center? Well, well, the old-fashioned style is actually to use two 22-gauge Foley catheters and you place one in one nose, um, one in one nares and one in the other nares and you pull them out through the mouth, so you've got two of them out here. And then at the eyelid, you attach a vaginal pack on both sides and with an O suture and a long suture afterwards there, a retrieval suture, and then you pull them back through and you get tamponade at the back of the nasal pharynx there, the posterior aspect, and then you tie it at the front with a nasal bolster. Um, and then you can pack anteriorly in front of that. 
which is pretty much like this. Now, just a warning, as you can see with this patient, they've been intubated. And, and I'd strongly suggest that control the airway before you're doing this. There's a lot of bleeding going around here and you can get aspiration, you can get hypoxic very quickly. So that occurs uncommonly and uh, really quite rarely, but it's an important technique to be aware of. Okay, well, so we've looked briefly at the anatomy. We've looked at some of the simple first aid. Uh, we've looked at using pledgets, including tranexamic acid. Um, we've uh, talked a little bit about rapid rhido and its insertion. Um, and we've talked a little bit about what we can do with posterior bleeds, both the interventional angiography and the double folly technique. Oh, I think that'll just about do for epistaxis in one copy. Thanks, I'll see you all next time. Cheers.